Last week on Math for Game Developers, we saw how the correct choice of algorithm can improve the running time of your game by a factor of a thousand or even more. And this week on Math for Game Developers, I'm recovering from a cold, which has turned me into movie announcer guy. This summer, coming to a theater near you, Mathematics, a heartwarming story starring Mathematics, produced by and directed by Mathematics. All right, enough of that. (laughs) So this week, we're going to focus on how to quantify the running time of your algorithms. And to do that, we're going to use something called big O notation. Okay, so let's say that we have two algorithms and we're going to use these two functions right here to describe how many steps the algorithm has to take or in other words how many pieces of data you have to look at in order to find the correct answer and for the first function we're going to have n plus n squared in other words n is some kind of setup phase where you have to maybe set up a data structure for your algorithm. And in order to do that, it has to look at every piece of data in that in that in your data set and do n steps. And then you do n squared, which is going to be some kind of process similar to what we did in the naive uh, algorithm in the previous video where you have two for loops, one inside the other, each looking at every item in your data set. Now, for g of n, which is our second algorithm, it's going to do our n squared steps. There are those two for loops. But inside that inner for loop, it's going to look at each piece of data twice. And so we have 2n squared here. Actually, that would probably give us a 4n squared, wouldn't it? Because 2 squared is 4. So we want to compare these two algorithms and see which one will give us the better result. And so we're going to use, like I mentioned, oh, what is this? What is this? It was going so well. Okay, fixed it. So we're going to use big O notation. Okay, so let's see what that is. I'm going to draw a graph and we're going to visually compare the two terms of our first algorithm. Here's the first one, it is n. And then here's the second one, it is n squared. So this is how complicated the setup phase of our first algorithm looks. And then the n squared is how how much work the actual part of the algorithm does. And you can see, let's, let's consider what happens when we are dealing with a million things in our game. We're really only concerned here with when n is a very large number. Because we use very large, we have very large numbers a lot in our in our games for example in the previous video we consider what happens when we have a hundred thousand players in our game or maybe we we are trying to render a million triangles and so let's look at a million okay what happens when how, how many steps does the setup phase have to take when there are a million uh, things that we have to consider with our algorithm the setup phase is just n, so we have a million. But for the n squared part, we have to do a million times million, which is a trillion. A trillion things we have to do. And so we can see that. I mean, a million and a trillion are both astronomically large numbers, and it's just, you can't think about how large they are. They're just too big to fit inside your head. But when you write them out like this, you can see that a million doesn't even take any effect until the sixth decimal place. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so a trillion is six orders of magnitude larger than a million. 
So we don't even care what the million does when we're working in trillions. The million doesn't even matter at all. So we're going to write our big O notation like this. Big O of n squared plus n, which is the running time of our first algorithm, is equal to big O of n squared. The n part is so small compared to a trillion that it doesn't even matter. It's insignificant for our purposes. Now let's look at what happens. When we have an n squared algorithm versus a 2n squared algorithm. Okay. Now we are again going to have a trillion items that we're going that we're looking at in our algorithm. But in the first case, uh, a, tr a million squared is going to be a trillion. But two, uh, this four turned into a two. Let's make that a four again. Four n squared is going to be four trillion. And now this is a subtle point because we care about how the algorithm behaves when we're looking at a large number. And you can see that these two algorithms behave the same. They modify the same significant digit here, the trillions place. And so they are similar enough that we're not terribly concerned with the difference between four trillion and, and one trillion. I mean, if you're gonna be doing something once versus twice versus three times, the computer can knock that out in no time. So big O of four n squared is just n squared. So we can see that the running times of these two algorithms are really the exact same. We were able to knock out the n part of this algorithm and we were able to knock out the coefficient in front of this n4. And so the algorithms won't take the exact same amount of time, but they'll take about the same order of magnitude of time. So let's formalize this up a little bit using a different color over here on the left. If you have big O, we'll do this one first, of two functions, I'm going to call them f1 of n plus f2 of n, okay? Then we're going to look at which is the larger function. In our case, f1 of n was n, and f2 of n was n squared. And so we're going to get rid of f1 of n, and we're just going to do f2 of n, okay? We only care about the very largest term function and the rest we can get rid of. And then next, if we have a coefficient, and, and if we can write our function like this, where it's the coefficient of some function of n, then we can get rid of the coefficient. And we have big O of k of f of n is the same thing as big O of f of n. It describes the same running time of algorithm. So last for this video, let's take a look at some of the common running times of algorithms and see some examples of what they are. So first is big O of one. This is also called constant. This is a constant time algorithm. And some examples of this would be uh, doing an array index. So it doesn't matter how many items are in my array. I can find the answer to my problem immediately. I can index any item in that array without looking at any of the other items in the array. So um, if I have a million triangles, I can always get the 222nd triangle with just a little bit of math. So this is a constant time algorithm. Next would be log of n. This is a logarithmic algorithm. Logarithmic. 
And an example of a logarithmic time algorithm is a binary search algorithm, which I think we've not covered yet, but we'll cover it soon. And a binary search algorithm um, is it, it's logarithmic because for every step in the algorithm, this is very similar to the merge sort example we did a few months ago, for every step in the algorithm, you cut the number of items that you need to consider by half. But notice I didn't write a base in this logarithm. I don't need to because every type of logarithm, whether it be log base 2 or log base e or log base 10, they are all actually constant multiples of each other. So we can just write log n. Any logarithmic time algorithm is going to fall in this category. So next we're going to look at linear. In a linear time algorithm, you have to look at every item in your data set in order to find the answer. An example of this might be to find the length of a string by counting how many items there are in the string. So when you call the strlen function, strlen, in C, this is an example of a linear time algorithm because it has to go through every item, every character in the string. And another example is if you want to find the maximum value in an unsorted array, then you have to look at every item in that array. If you sort the array first, then you can find the maximum value in constant time. It's going to be at the end of the array, or you can find the minimum value in constant time. It's always going to be the first item in the array. Or you can find the median value. It's always going to be the middle item in the array. So moving on, we have n log n, which has one of the coolest names, I think. It's linear rhythmic. n log n, that is n times the logarithm of n, is a linear rhythmic algorithm. And most of the comparison, both of the comparison sorts we've covered so far, those being merge sort and heap sort, are linear rhythmic time algorithms. So now we're getting into algorithms that are a bit slower and that we want to avoid, starting with n squared algorithms. These are called quadratic time algorithms. And that quadratic, by the way, is the same quadratic as the quadratic equation. It means this squared right here. So any naive uh, sorting algorithm, like the one we did in the previous video, is going to be an n squared algorithm. So usually we can avoid n squared algorithms by uh, using an n log n algorithm. And the last one is n cubed, which is called cubic. Or, uh, to quote Elon Ruskin, another way to pronounce this is you're fired. There's really no reason to write a cubic time algorithm in any performant code. Because as we're going to see in the next videos, there are always ways to structure your data in order to avoid n squared and n cubed algorithms. But that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. In the next few videos, we're going to learn some different op optimization techniques. We're actually going to get away from al algorithm algorithmic analysis. And the reason is, for one, there are many algorithms on the internet and you can find them and you can implement them and you can learn them very easily. There's lots of information scattered all over the internet on algorithmic analysis. It's the primary way of optimizing programs. But it omits a lot of important data. I'm sure you were wondering why it's acceptable for us to get rid of this for and just lop it off entirely. I mean, an algorithm that is O of 4n squared is obviously going to run faster than an algorithm that's O of 2n squared. So these constants, which are a lot of times ignored, are actually very important. And so in the next few videos, we're going to learn a lot of methods to reduce the constants in our, uh, alg in our running times. And we're going to see that that actually nets us a lot. And so I'll see you then.